Hey everyone, welcome to another Fortune Fire Serie A Fantasy Tips video. Thank you very much for helping me break 100 subscribers finally. Actually, now that I check, I am at 103. So let's start working up to that 200 and see how I can get before the season and see if we can get there by the end. Um, feel free to leave any feedback or uh, comment about the video in any way, add your thoughts. I appreciate that. But uh, today's video will be a little quicker. We covered defenders yesterday. We're going to cover goalkeepers today. And I don't have too much to say about goalkeepers, but for completeness sake, I did want to get them done. And then we'll move on to midfielders and attackers in later videos. Um, but I just did want to see what my goalkeeper theories are and which one I'm kind of looking at to start the season, which ones I'm not touching and which ones may pay off for you. But I'm not willing to go there. Okay, so without further ado, please don't forget to like and subscribe and we will begin. So the cheap options, the four to 4.5 options. I don't currently know of any starting keepers in Serie A that are 4.0. Um, so if you know, drop it in the comments. I think that'd be a great option. Last year, I was luckily able to start with Zoet, who was starting for Spezia at the time, didn't end the season as the starter. Um, but that was good to get some games out of him at 4.0. Uh, other than that, I don't know of any right now because I think probably also still has that position. Uh, Vicario is likely my starting keeper for the season. Uh, I do want to start with a 4.5 keeper, so I have more money to spend up the field. Um, that is a pretty common fantasy tactic, I'd say. Uh, some people like that more guaranteed clean sheet every week. But something to remember is all it takes is one goal. It doesn't matter who wins, who loses. One goal kind of brings your keeper generally down to one or two points, max three. Um, so generally, let's say Inter facing Cremonese wins seven to one. Well, that one, it's not likely Cremonese got three shots on target. That's probably a counterattack goal. And your keeper now is getting uh, two points. So not like it's really easy to lose basically all your points that you're going to get other than your playing points with a top end keeper. Obviously, you have more opportunities to get clean sheets, but you're also spending that money. Whereas with a keeper from a weaker team, they're also taking a lot of shots on them as well. If we take that same fixture or we say Inter versus Empoli here, Inter's probably getting three, four, five, maybe even six, seven, eight or nine shots on goal. So even if Vicario were to let a goal past him, he still potentially makes four or five points based on saves as well. So you generally what weaker keepers don't get in clean sheets, they tend to somewhat make up in save points as well and those save points will contribute towards bonus points okay so this is why i go with the 4.5 keeper normally i am going with vicario just because empoli does play a lot of um lower scoring games they're an established Serie A team even if they went down for a bit they have been there a lot they have uh they he has a lot of potential for save points. You don't really want to have to use a transfer on a keeper. Um, and they have a good run of fixtures to start out the season. Now, really, we'll go to the next one, and it's for some similar reasons. We have Luigi Jeppe here. Uh, kind of the same reason, 4.5. Uh, he's not on as a defensively strong team as Empoli. Slanatana was very leaky at some points last season, so less likely for clean sheets, but does have good fixtures to start off the season. So if you are thinking about an early wild card, um, Sepe might be your guy. Um, but at the end of the day, especially if you're not planning on changing him out, it doesn't really matter which 4.5 keeper you take from which team. Maybe just pick the strongest team you think that has the best chance of clean sheets. And um, that'll work because whether one has good fixtures now, they'll have bad fixtures later, or they'll all end up facing the same teams. So unless you're planning out your wild card and picking the fixtures accordingly to that, which sometimes you do have an earlier wild card, which is why I am going with who has the best fixtures now, um, it doesn't matter too much who that 4.5 keeper is. It's just likely going to be on a weaker team. 
The only chance you get it on a greater team is if potentially one of the starting keepers right now get transferred or injured. And then a big team is playing their second string keeper, um, which uh, then at least would make sense to get the high string keeper for 4.5, especially if it's for a long period of time. I didn't actually add this into the video, but obviously we need two keepers. Generally, I just am going to keep this keeper as my starting keeper and my second keeper is going to be a 4.0. One, I generally make sure that that is from a team that I don't want three players from, so it's not taking up a spot. And if I think they have some kind of a shot of playing, I just put Zoe in again for now uh, because he at least had games last year, so potential for this year. But when I'm looking through the projected starting 11s closer to the start date, uh, I'll be seeing if any of these names are popping up and whichever one just gives me the best chance at a second playing keeper. The five plus options. Now I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Shenzi Mignon and uh, Hindenovich, none of them are in my team uh, or in my suggestions. I think 5.5 and up is way too much to pay for a keeper um, as they almost have the same chance of getting points as any of the fives or maybe even five, 4.5s. So those three, despite being good keepers, despite Mignon having a great season last year and uh, win the Keeper of the Year award in Serie A, I will not be touching him and I'm not going to recommend to. Obviously, the other people have their keeping philosophies as well. And especially because that's going to be taking up an inter and AC Milan uh, spot as well. Or Juve, although I don't even know if I have any Juve players in a draft right now. So, but anyway, um, those ones will not be showing up. They will all be 5 million keepers. They will all be for basically the exact same reasons. Okay, so I have the same bullet points for each one. I'm just going to talk through the three that I think. They're all 5.0 million keepers. They're all on bigger teams. This is where you're starting to get starting keepers on bigger teams, but clearly not the big clubs that enter AC Milan as well. Um, Roma has great fixtures to start out the season. The only issue is with all these keepers, you are taking up a spot on that team. Remember, you can only have a maximum of three players. Um, from each team. So this only allows you to have two Roma players going forward. Same idea with Musso from Atalanta. I haven't seen another goalie coming in to uh, take the start away from him. Again, good fixtures, but if you want three other Atalanta players up front, well, now you can't because one of them is tied up in your goalkeeper. And the last one is Alex Merritt. Um, Ospina is now gone to play in the Middle East, so he does look like he lined up to be the starting keeper. We'll see if any transfer in occurs. Um, takes up that Napoli spot, and um, again, you might want players like Di Lorenzo, Lozano, Oshim Hen, and stuff. If you want all three of them, you cannot because you have merit. So the fact that it's taking up that uh, spot from a big team it's an extra 0.5 million. I don't think I'm going to go with any of them, but if you are wanting a stronger keeper from a stronger team, that's probably the route I'm suggesting you go with it. Okay. Uh, let me know if you have any cheap keepers that you think will get playing time, especially those 4.0 uh, keepers. Let me know if you have a different keeper philosophy. Please drop a like and subscribe and put your comments below. Take care and I'll see you on midfielders hopefully tomorrow.